الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا ما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة كل ضلالة في النار Tonight, b'idhnillahi azza wa jal, I will just restart the kitab al-salaq that we started and we initiated talking about it last time. Qala al-musannifu rahimahullah, kitab al-salaq, kullu ma jaza an yakuna thamanan jaza an yakuna sadaqan qalilan aw kathira. لقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم للذي قال له زوجني هذه المرأة إن لم يكن لك بها حاجة التمس ولو خاتما من حديد فإذا زوج الرجل ابنته بأي صداق كان جاز ولا ينقصها غير الأب من مهر مثله, من مهر مثلها إلا برضاها وإذا أصدقها عبدا بعينه فوجدته معيبا خيرت بين أرشه ورده وأخذ قيمته وإن وجدته مغصوبا أو حرا فلها قيمته وإن كانت عالمة بحريته أو غصبه حين العقد فلها مهر, مثل مهر مثلها وإن تزوجها على أن يشتري لها عبدا بعينه فلم يبيعه سيده أو طلب به أكثر من قيمته فلها قيمته كتاب الصداق أو الصداق كلاهما وارد الأشهر الصداق بفتح الصان قول ابن عبد البر رحمه الله أجمع أهل العلم على وجوب الصداق الصداق يعني المهر the dowry and it's the consensus of أهل العلم the dowry that is the what the husband gives the wife when they get married and people know as dowry or al-mahr or al-sadaq. It's the ijma' and the consensus of the ulama that it's a must, wajib, yani mandatory. It has to be given. And also they agree that it's not permissible for a man to consummate his marriage, yani to have intercourse with his new wife without a dowry agreed on whether it's paid right away or to be paid later but they have to agree on some or sort of a dowry or sadaq that considered to be al-mahr واختلف العلماء في بعض صوره now there are some issues that arise according or related to al some conditions or situations that scenarios that take place and the ulama have different opinions regarding those situations for example the first that we will talk about حكم العقد الذي اشترط فيه عدم المهر what is the validity of a marriage contract where there is a condition that there is no mahr. We already said, mahr is wajib. And it's a must in a marriage contract. But if there is a marriage contract that a woman came to a person, a man, she's alone, she wants to get married. And she said, if you marry me, I forgive you the dowry. Because the dowry or sadaq is her right. 
the dowry is something the man gives to the woman that he's marrying. So a woman comes to a man and she tells him, I forgive you the dowry. I waive it if you marry me. So you don't need to worry about a dowry. Or a man comes to a family or a woman and he tells her, listen, you're single, you're getting old, whatever the situation is, you're alone. I'll marry you with the condition that I don't give you a dowry. For example, he can't afford it. And the dowries in those areas or in this culture or in this country or in this city, X amount of money. He said, I can't, so I'll marry you, but you cannot ask for a dowry. So what is the hukum of such contracts? And that is one of the points that the ulama have discussed. ذهب جمهور الفقهاء the majority of Ahl al And you can notice from this that you will see that scholars, when it comes to contracts like these, contracts of business, they always try to make as many outlets as possible for the people. Because if it happened that people are got, or got married through such contract, there was no dowry, no condi condition was set by her or him, no dowry. And years later they come to ask, were we or were we right or our marriage is valid because of this? And now they have kids and they have families and they have this and that. So it's really very, becomes very harmful to the society to separate between them. You have families will be lost, you have kids will be will be uh, lost, you have wife will be divorced, you have husband who doesn't have someone. So all these can lead to many problems in the society. So you find with the idea of the contracts, they always try to make it as easy as possible. But with the condition within the limitation of the shara, huh? fi hudud al-shara, yani within the boundaries of the shara. They cannot go so far outside the shara or against the sharia ah, to make it easy for people like some do these days. So he will be committing zina with his, the woman that he's considering his wife. It's not his wife because the sharia ah does not legitimize such marriage. Or for example, he divorced his wife 50 times. 50 times. Then they want to make it easy, they said, your husband and wife, you got kids. No. Sharia is clear in those issues. So when, the, when we say the ulama always try to find outlets within the boundaries of Sharia. Huh? They are limited by the rules of Sharia. So Jumhur, ah, jumhur al ulama and the majority of the scholars said that such condition batil. Condition of what? of no dowry. They said this condition, if it's put as part of the marriage contract, we gonna overlook it. Yeah, and it doesn't make any, it doesn't have any worth. For example, a man marries a woman and he puts that condition, there's no dowry for him. She, okay, she doesn't know much. Then two years later, she starts studying or she hears and she gets informed that she is entitled for the, for the mahr. And that condition and that clause in that contract is of no worth. Then she has the right to ask this husband for doubt. So the majority of Ahl al-Ilm, they said such condition is of no worth. However, the marriage contract continues. العقد صحيح والشرط باطل العقد the contract is صحيح but the condition is باطل and the reason they said العقد صحيح والشرط باطل the reason that they continued to consider the contract to be valid is they said this condition 
does not eliminate the intent behind marriage, behind the contract. It has nothing to do with the intent, what that means. يعني, the intent behind the marriage contract is not the dowry. The intent والقصد, من النكاح, is many other things, but dowry is not one of them. سكينة, طمأنينة, uh, chastity, to protect yourself from the haram, uh, الرحمة, These are the intents and مقاصد الشرع من النكاح. Dowry is not. It's a requirement, it's a condition, شرط. Even some said ركن. But it's not قصد الشارع من النكاح. So they said since this condition that is invalid has nothing to do with the intent behind the contract, then we say the condition is باطل, the contract and العقد صحيح. That is the opinion. يعني, for example, if someone comes or to marry some woman, she tells him, I'll marry you, but you can't sleep with me. Obviously, this condition is batil and really destroys a main intent behind the contract, behind the contract. Or, yeah, you can marry me, but I don't want you to live with me. Whenever we want to see each other, we, I give you a call, I send you a message, whatever. لا. سكينة طمأنينة إن لباس لكم وأنتم لباس لهن. Huh? So all these things. So when the condition that is باطل has to do in, in, in affecting huh? and uh, disregarding the intent behind marriage, that's when it becomes invalidates the whole contract. العقد الدوري الصداق isn't. Dowry. The dowry isn't. Okay? And they also said, قاعدة عند الجمهور أن الشروط في عقد النكاح الشروط الباطلة يعني لا تفسد العقد إلا أن تكون مخالفة للكتاب والسنة. They said الشروط الباطلة, the invalid conditions in con marriage contract do not invalidate the contract itself until it's clearly against the Quran and here is, is this condition or شرط of no dowry مخالف للقرآن والسنة مخالف إذا الشروط الفاسدة ها شروط الفاسدة يصح العقد وتبطل الش... ويبطل الشرط إن كان مخالفا للكتاب والسنة طب إذا لم يكن مخالفا للكتاب والسنة لا يبطل شيء and we had a whole section or a lecture about الشروط في النكاح مش شروط النكاح that's why this قاعدة and this rule for أهل السنة والجماعة for the علماء is الشروط الفاسدة في عقد النكاح لا تبطل العقد ولكن تبطل الشرط وريبطل الشرط إلا أن يكون الشرط مخالفا للكتاب أو الشرط هذا يبطل إذا كان مخالفا للكتاب أبو العباس بن تيمية يرش أن الشرط المخالف لمقصود الشارع في النكاح يبطل به العقد So now we have the second opinion that is Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and he said also some of the ulama had this opinion is that he said a condition that goes against the intent of marriage invalidates the marriage as well as the condition itself is invalid in the first place so they're both batr and again now the answer to this many answers as we will see but the answer the main answer to this is they said dowry is not from the from the intent of the nikah. Dowry is not min maqasin shar. Yaqul 
لأنه شرط فيه معصية شرط فيه معصية لمخالفة قول الله أو شرط فيه يعني الشارط المرأة والرجل معصية لمخالفة قول الله وآت النساء صدقاتهن نحلة الله says in the Quran to give the women when you marry them their dowries it's their rights so they're saying he's saying and since you choose not to give her that means you are disobeying Allah there is no disagreement between the, the, the Jamahir between the majority of Ahlul Ilm and between this the actually the reason they invalidated the condition because they think it's ma'asir alright so this ayah by itself is not dalil actually they agree on that they agree that the woman is entitled for a mahr got it so this dalil his dalil is not is not a valid or strong dalil for his point it's a valid dalil for both that's in mahr is wajib here we're talking about different point we're talking about what happens to عقد النكاح if this condition takes place ويقول ويأن الله سبحانه قيد قيد الحل بوجود المهر قال تعالى وأحل لكم ما وراء ذلك أن تبتغوا بأموالكم فجعل حل الوطء مشروط بالمبلغ بالمال بالمهر so he also says قوله تعالى وأحل لكم ما وراء ذلك يعني after Allah talks about the women that are haram to marry حرمت عليكم مهاتكم وخواتكم Allah says, and it's permissible for you, what's after that? Yani beside that, beside these women that Allah made mention in the ayah. Beside that, everything is permissible for you to marry. Huh? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and tabtagu bi amwali. Yani, as long as there is mahr. Okay? There is mahr, you pay her. For mahr, for marriage, that's it. So he said, here is another ayah, it says, you cannot, this woman is not permissible for you without mahr. As the ayah says, وَحِلَّ لَكُمْ مَا وَرَاءَ ذَلِكُمْ تَبْتَغُوا بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ So if there is no money, it's not halal. See? Okay. And also the jumhur agree on that. They agree that you cannot marry a woman without mahr. ولأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لم يعذر الفقير الذي طلب الزواج من المرأة ولو لم يجد خاتما من حديد إلا أن يعلمها شيئا من القرآن. And also he's saying also the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did not accept from the man you see what happened is a woman offered herself to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to marry him. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did not want. So a man said يا رسول الله if you don't want to marry her I can marry her. So the Prophet ﷺ said, what do you have for her as a dowry? He said, I have none. He said, not even a brass ring. He said, not even. Poor. He said, do you know anything of the Quran? He said, yes. He said, then this is teacher, that's her mahr. And we'll talk about what that means. Huh? So don't come and say, oh Allah, I'm going to teach her al-Fatiha. And that's, I don't need to worry about al-mahr. La. That means something. We'll talk about it, inshallah. Most probably, or maybe, she knows the Fatiha better than him. Okay. So these are the adilla and the proofs of Shaykh al-Islam, which if you look at all of them, really have nothing to do with the point we're discussing. Is the marriage valid or not? But he's looking at these to say, since the dowry was obligatory the marriage did not take place until the dowry was paid or until the dowry was agreed on because the guy who gonna teach her the Quran that's muqaddam or muajjal is that immediate or gonna be later after the marriage later he's not going to teach her and then okay now I told her I'll marry her La. As long as the point is, it has to be agreed on. So he's saying, you can see that Allah put, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you can marry all the women beside the ones he mentioned, if you give them their dowry. And if you don't give them the dowry, you cannot marry them. 
If you cannot teach her the Quran as a dowry, you cannot marry her. Huh? So this he's saying, the fact that the dowry was a condition for the marriage, that means the, the, the absence of the dowry invalidates the marriage. Yeah, and the marriage is not right from the beginning. That is why he mentioned all these hadith. The Jumhur said, no, we're going to say the marriage is valid, but the condition of no dowry, or the action of not giving a dowry, or the action of agreeing there is no dowry, that is what's bottom. And look how they answered Tikhilis. They said, Lamr al Awl, in Hada Shart Yaud, Ala Ma'na Zaid, Filak. They said that this condition, huh, as I said already, has nothing to do with the intent of the marriage. Min Maqsud al Sharah. And actually, some of the ulama, as we will see, that the dowry doesn't have to be mentioned in the contract, at the time of the contract. So that is another strength or another support for their opinion. It doesn't have to be mentioned at the time of the contract. Okay, yani the, the guy conducting the marriage or shuhud or all that. Don't have to be informed of the dowry. Okay, so why? They're saying because it not, has nothing to do with the intent behind marriage. Okay? So it's not in maqsul okay. Which is what we have explained that all the adilla of Shaykh Islam Nutaymiyyah agreed on by the by the Jumhur. It's what they differed is the hukum deduced from this from this adilla. They look at it as we believe that and we say that you have to have a dowry. But we're saying the marriage is not invalid if there is no dowry. He looked at it from different angles. So they said, لأن وجود المهر حكم شرعي لا علاقة له بالشروط الجعلية التي بين العاقدين فهما لو أبطلا يصح العقد ويبطل الشر They're saying طيب We agreed when he mentioned the story of the man who want to marry the woman the process I'm told him give her brass ring or whatever They said we believe that too and we believe that even if two people agreed the husband and the wife that they don't want dowry and that's الحكام الجعلية يعني يجعلوها بينهم ها they create, they made it up. It's not in the Sharia. They said, and, but we're saying that الأحكام الجعلية, يعني الأحكام, that the conditions that two sides of the contract agree on, in this case the husband and the wife, they agreed on, huh? the fact that they agreed on does not make it okay. Don't say, but I agreed, and you hear that a lot. He said, I signed a contract and there is riba in it, and, but I agreed to pay it and the guy agreed to take it. We agreed it's okay. La. Sharia said, such condition of riba is haram, interest is haram, for example, in this condition, situation. So the fact that both sides of the contracts agreed does not make it halal. Clear? The other kind of conditions, if they're not against the Qur'an and the Sunnah, then we said agree on whatever you want, as long as it's not Qur'an against Qur'an and Sunnah. Or someone says, well, you know, I'll sell you my car, huh? but uh, I want to use it for one more day. It's fine. There's nothing against the Qur'an and the Sunnah in this. Agreed on. Do you find in the Quran and the Sunnah Dalil that says if someone sells his vehicle to someone else and he tells him that, nah, you don't find that specific. But we know the general rule, there is nothing against that. Okay. So the point is, they said, we agree with this. We said that even though they agreed, that does not make the dowry uh, unnecessary or not called for. And just the fact the husband and the wife said, okay, you know what, I don't want dowry, you don't have to pay me. And he says, okay, thank you very much, you're very nice. That does not make 
the dowry not obligatory anymore. Still obligatory. Got it? Still obligatory. And he's still obligated to pay it to the woman. Even if she waives it, even if he doesn't if he say if he doesn't want it or doesn't want to give it. So that's why they said the condition is invalid. We agree with Shaykh Al Islam, but we disagree with him that but when he says the contract is invalid. We say the contract is valid. As I said in the beginning. And that is even the asl in the Shaykh al-Islam Nutaymi. They try to make the contract as valid as possible. They try to make outlet, outlets for the, for the contracts to make them valid. To make it easy for the people. Because يعني, I won't exaggerate. If I say 95% of contracts out there got something in him that is against the Sharia. But sometimes, or most of the time, if you're going to pick on every single thing, people will not be able to buy or sell or do this or do that. So the opinion or the, the default or the asl in the ulama in fuqaha is we're going to try to make contracts as easy as possible. So if there is a wrong condition or a clause, we're going to say it's batil, but the contract is still valid. If this, this, then we're going to say it's batil, the contract is still okay. But it reaches some point where there are too many clauses or there are some conditions that are so invalid that really harm the intent of the contract. And we cannot just say ignore it and continue with your deal. Huh? Yeah, and if someone comes and he borrowed some money. And then it says, first clause, he needs to pay after 12 months. Second clause, he needs, second, third, third, fine. Clause, and he has to pay 5% interest every month. This clause really destroyed the main intent of the contract. The contract is when you lend, huh, is what? Yes. تطوعي, uh, voluntarily and at the same time بالمعروف, uh, doing it for the pleasure of Allah to remove a hardship of a brother or to help him in his endeavor this clause itself destroy that so if the contract of lending is based on معروف and there is a clause that completely eliminate that ma'roof. So the contract falls. Got it? So these, we what do Yeah. It's talking about contract. Does that mean only in papers or the words? La. Contracts, whether it's a word or a paper. But papers is, is, is introduced to write it, huh? بينكم, is to guarantee the rights. Huh? It's better. It's a sunnah. Huh? But shafa, if you promise, that's it. Ya you alladina amanu, awfu bil uqud. Whether you wrote it, whether you said it, whether you uh, you approved it. Yani you stayed silent but you approved. And someone tells you I want to uh, buy your car. And you go like this. Okay. That's aqd. I want to pay 5,000. Okay. Aqd. You don't have to say okay. Shake your head. If people, if people are, and in some cultures this means yes, and some culture it means no. Whatever that, huh? So it's what people agree. So when we say al-uqud, Contracts doesn't mean or doesn't have to be on papers, whatever people agree on. Okay, so inshallah, يعني, that answers. So they said, الأصل تصحيح العقود ما أمكن, and that is the منهج of Shaykh Al Islam Ibn Ibn Taymiyyah. و 
وهو أصله شيخ الإسلام له أصل يقول كل شرط خالف مقصود الشارع في النكاح فإنه يرى بطلان أما في المعاملة المالية فيرى أن ما خالف مقصود الشارع يبطل الشرط ويصح العقد أو يصح العقد وإن خالف مقصود العقد بطل الشرط والعقد okay. So here شيخ الإسلام adopts the same أصول as the جماهير the majority and that is as long as the condition the invalid condition has nothing to do with the intent of the contract the solid the main intent of the contract then we're going to say that the condition is invalid the contract proceed to be to be valid ah. so this is the opinions Allahu A'lam Rajih and the more correct is the opinion of the majority that the condition will be invalid and the aqid sahih valid sound لا يلزم مسألة now that's مسألة if there was a condition we also mentioned if a woman huh? if a woman uh, says to a man marry me and I save I save you the, the, the dowry there is no I don't want mahr from you the ulama said this is hibah يعني المرأة تهب نفسها للرجل and that is not allowed for the believers that is only allowed for the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam okay a woman to do that is not permissible and Allah said that in the Quran. So it's very important to differentiate in that condition. يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى لا جناح عليكم إن طلقتم النساء ما لم تمسوهن أو تفرضوا لهن فريضة. So here Allah says there is no blame on you. There's no harm to divorce women even if you have not touched them yet even if you did not or you have not touched them yet or you have not agreed on a dowry so they're saying the ulama saying that means the dowry doesn't have to be agreed on on the time of the contract which is another strong support for Jumhur or Ibn Taymiyyah? Jumhur. Okay. The ayah says, there is no harm if to divorce women, or you divorce a woman, even if you have not touched them yet, and even if you did not yet agree on the dowry. Ma'alam tamassuhun, touch them, يعني النكاح يعني you consummate the marriage or give them agreed on a dowry so they're saying that is a proof that mentioning that the mahr doesn't have to be at the time of the of العقد can take place later which means the contract is valid even though there is no talk about dowry yet and at one point they have to talk to talk about it. But the sunnah is to have agreed and to mention the dowry at the time of the contract. Why? So there will be no dispute. يعني, a man marries a woman, they do the contract, and then when it's time to decide the, the, the mahr, she wants $10,000. He doesn't want to pay. He wants $1,000, for example. So that can cause dispute. Or he says, well, I'm already married to her. I don't care. I'm not paying anything. Dispute. So even if it's permissible not to agree on the dowry at the time of the contract, but the sunnah to do, because that will get you out of dispute. What if he, she wants something and he cannot afford it? Okay. What if he wants, she wants something and he doesn't feel like he needs to pay all that? Or whatever the situation is. Okay. What if she wants Laban Lasfur? So sometimes she might ask for something impossible. Where are I going to get you that? You want the stars? Huh? So, 
the Sunnah, it's min to mention that to agree on at the time of the contract. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, when the man said, if you don't want her, I'll marry her, or marry her to me, he said, give her that. What can you give her? Why he yani poor? So give her a, a ring. He said, I can't. Okay? Yeah, I need the Prophet ﷺ mentioning the things at the time of the contract, and that is the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. والمستحب التخفيف في المهر وألا يزيد على مهر أزواج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وبناته مستحب it's recommended to have light dowry not to make it very expensive some وليس أو رولياء of the of the groom يعني you feel like they're bargaining with you. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Personally, I did not have to go through that. Okay. I don't know about you guys. But yeah, and this is one of the, the blessings in this country. Right? You don't, you don't see that often. Back home, it's a disaster. A disaster. However, the ulama have discussed that. But here, this and then, خلاص. Anything you say goes, alhamdulillah. Yet you still find some hard-headed people here who carry that mentality, and their door is turning 40s, huh? and they're still not married. And they come, want to propose, or, yeah, he's not changing. What people going to say about you? Well, خليلها. Huh? Keep her. And that is haram, that is dhulm. And we will see what the ulama said about a man who does that, a father, a wali who does that. And we have talked about the awliya before, the wali. When the wali, for no obvious reason or for no shari'i reason, he stands in the way of the woman, of the girl to be married. We said, now she goes to the next wali. That is to solve a problem. But not loosely like some people do. They don't even consult with the first wali. She wants to get married without wali, she wants to get... And this is يعني, a da'wah, and this is a call to everyone who conduct these marriages. I tell you, a marriage without wali is haram, and if you're conducting it, then you're part of the zina. You're part of a zina contract that you had, agreed, you had conducted yourself. Any marriage without wali, whether she was married before, whether she wasn't, whether she's virgin, whether she's not, whether she has a hundred kids, whether she's a hundred years old, without wali, the marriage is invalid. And the opinion of those who said it's valid if she's tayyib uh, has no dalil and has no support. So be aware. Do you find today they'll go to an office? You find some brothers, Allah in newspapers, on internet, we conduct marriage. Tayyib, Jazakallah khair, you want to bring two people together, great. Do it according to the, to the Quran and the Sunnah. She comes, he comes. Allah, we're here to get married. Uh, where is your father? Uh, my father is not here. We didn't know he has to come. It's like they're going to apply for, for driver license. You have to get your father. Well, my father, we came all the way from West Palm Beach. Well, okay, okay. I know it's a long drive, you know. Usually you, may, you shore in the salah when you travel, then we're gonna shore in the conditions of the marriage contract. Yeah, let's do it without him. La. But make sure your father is okay with it. <laughs> Doesn't work like that. So, ittaqullah, fear Allah. This is a serious thing. This is, you're not talking about he, he gonna sell her a, a box or a car and she gonna buy it and it's the end of the story and it's over. La. You're talking about marriage, you're talking about relationship, you're talking about sexual relationship, you're talking about kids, you're talking about names and lineage and families. And, so taqillah, the matter is not that easy and that loose. For what? So you can get the 50 or the 100 dollars after they're done.
and some brother who conducts these things, he tells me, well, sometimes they give me five dollars. He said, why you take it in the first place? And you're not even yeah, any a person who should be conducting these things, you don't even know the ahkam of, it, of the marriage. You don't have ahkam al zawaj and doesn't. They think it's something easy. Mash. Mash. No, Mustahan. Fal Mustahabu Tahfif al Mahr. It's recommended that al Mahr to be law. Okay? Law. Make it easy for the people. And also, the ulama have discussed, it should not, the mahr of any woman, should not go over the mahr of the wives and the daughters of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa But as we will see, it depends on l'urf. Qul Aisha radiyallahu anha, wa yaqul Abi Salma ibn Abdul Rahman, سألت عائشة رضي الله عن عائشة زوج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كم كان صداق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he asked how much was the mahr of the wives of the princess فقالت كان صداقه لأزواجه ثنتي عشرة أوقية ونش ثنتي عشرة أوقية ونش قالت أتدري من نش قال قلت لا قالت نصف أوقية نصف أوقية فتلك خمسمائة درهم فهذا صداق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأزواجه. so the صداق and the مهر of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to his wives twelve and a half ounces that is five hundred درهم. you want to know how much that worth? go and listen to the Zakah lectures. We broke down what uqiyya was. We broke down the value of the dirham and the value of a dinar din. And how they did it. And of course that value would not apply later on. We don't use dirham. And, but the way they did it, they collected all the darahim and all the dinars that they had from then and throughout the years. And yeah, and some of the people specialists in this, they were weighing and subtracting and adding until they came up with these values. That's why you have the, the in, in, in current uh, measurements. That's why you have, when we say, Nisab uh, al-Dhahab, Nisab al we say 85 grams. We didn't have grams then. At 85 grams, remember they used to weigh with, huh? with the seeds of the, of the wheat and all these things. So they went and they collected it. And this wheat in this country is bigger than the wheat in there and this weighs more than, or 545 uh, grams of silver. So, so that is the mahr of the wives and the daughters of the Prophet قال عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه حديث حسن صحيح عند أبو داود ألا لا تغال في صداق النساء فإنه لو كان مكرمة عند الله أو تقوى لكان أولى بذلك رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وما أصدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أحدا من نسائه ولا بناته أكثر من اثنتي عشرة أوكي so you can see that the mahr of Umar radiallahu anh said, do not يعني, raise the mahr, make it difficult. Because if this is makrumah or honor, then Prophet ﷺ would have been most worthy of it. And he would have paid too much for his mahr, or he for his wives. But he didn't. He didn't ask for too much for his daughters. So it's not much. And that's what people do it for today. Huh? He wants $50,000 muqaddam, $100,000 muakhar. So he can brag. Or some people say, okay, you give me one gold dinar muqaddam, now, yeah, and immediate, one dollar, and muakhar, 200000 So the guy just wants to get married. Muakhar, yeah, and we're getting married. You're going to talk about divorce now? Muakhar, yeah, and if they get divorced, she get that. Uh, yeah, and he, uh, so he's not even worried about that. 
pray good, he signed. I agree. Khalas, you agree, you agree. Now he want, he, she drives him nuts. She makes his life miserable and he can't divorce her. He can't get out. She's doing the haram in front of his eyes and he cannot leave her because he has to dish out $200,000. So be wise, be smart when you go into these contracts. Remember, this is a contract. You agree on it from the beginning, you have to go through it the whole way. بل بالغ أبو العباس بن تيمية وقال فمن دعته نفسه إلى أن يزيد صداق ابنته على صداق بنات رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللاتي هن خير خلق الله في كل فضيلة وهن أفضل نساء العالمين في كل صفة فهو جاهل أحمق وكذلك صداق أمهات المؤمن شيخ الإسلام بن تيمية went too far and I don't exaggerate and say too far because you can see the ulama have agreed differently. But in other words, he's saying, the best of the hadi is hadi in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa khayru al-hadi hadi in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, and whoever thinks, or whoever himself invites him to ask for dowry more than the dowry of the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the doors of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he's ignorant and naive. To think he can be entitled for more. Okay. But now here, all these things are min bab al wara. Yani min bab tiba al hadi. Min bab sticking to the, to the sunnah of the Prophet. But no one said really it's obligatory not to go over the dowry of the wives of the Prophet. But they're saying out of respect, huh? out of being. Huh? Not thinking you can be better than the Prophet <coughs> and that is dangerous. ثم قال رحمه الله في مجموع الفتاوى ومن كان له يساء أو وجد فأحب أن يعطي امرأته صداقا فلا بأس بذلك أو يسار أو وجد فأحب أن يعطي امرأته صداقا فلا بأس بذلك قد قال تعالى وآتيتم إحداهن قنطارة Shaykh al-Islam, there he's talking about, as I said, in Bab al-Wara. But now when it comes to, to the rules and to the fiqh, cannot go, yani, in Bab al-Wara. Fiqh is fiqh. So he's saying, and whoever thinks, but here, yani, if you want to join his first opinion with this second, here he's saying, yani, in other words, he's not, the man or the husband is not forced into it. So the first he's talking about, he's talking about the wali or the wife asking for more than the mahr of the Prophet door. Then in this he's saying, but if the husband huh, is comfortable, got money, there is no harm to give her much more than that. So he made the humuk or jahil to come from the guru, the bride and her wali. But it's okay and it's good if the one who's getting married, the husband, volunteers to give more than that. And out of generosity. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآتَيْتُ مِحْدَاهُنَّ قِنْطَارَ قِنْطَار يعني a big amount. Bigger than 500 dirham. Qintar is a huge amount. So he's saying, so in, from these two sayings of his, he said, if you're the wali or you're the one asking for al-mahr, don't ask over what the Prophet Sallallahu asked or give or ask for his doors or give for his wife. And if you're someone getting married, then be generous like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and give as much as you can or as much as you like. Okay? And that is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was in all his affairs. يقول المؤلف كل ما جاز أن يكون ثمنا جاز أن يكون صداقا قليلا كان أو كثيرا. Okay. He said, رحمه الله. Everything that can be uh, bought or sold, ثمن. Anything you can pay, which anything that has value to be sold or bought. It's okay to be mahr, 
whether it's little or too much. Okay. Little comes from the hadith, give her a brass ring, ring of brass, hadith, khatam hadith. Kathir, that's why. The problem, there is a problem, or some of the ulama said, of course he did not mean that, but they said to him, for him to use, he said, uh, everything that can be bought or sold can be mar. Of course he's talking about things that are permissible. But you don't know who's going to read this and use it for his own hawa. Because, for example, uh, pork and khamr have thamen, huh? have thamen, have value. But you cannot buy or sell. So just, just to, to, to correct myself, he said everything that has value can be mar. Pigs and this, they have fa value in the market. But you cannot buy them or sell them. Dogs, you cannot sell dogs or buy dogs, okay? These things are obviously, so they said for him to say themen or value, something yeah, you need to be reconsidered. We need to be more specific. So no one comes to his wife and bring her lechon huh? or a pig, say this is your mother. Uh, Ibn Qudama said, anything that has value, la, all right? So here we're saying anything that has value and it's permissible to be sold or bought. Okay? Then can be mahr, can be used as dowry. <clears throat> also, add to that the things that uh, do not have. Yani monetary value, but they have other kind of values, like insects. Insects, very valuable for uh, uh, zoologists, for example. They ha might have value, but not necessarily monetary. So add to that, it got to be of monetary value. Huh? Monetary value. فعليه يجوز أن يكون صدق مالا أو عينا أو دينا أو منفعة مباحة. Uh, so صدق can be money, can be debt. Debt يعني متأخر. Huh? يعني I'll pay you later. That's why. Because it is, does it have monetary value? Yeah. I'll give you hundred hundred. I'll give you a thousand dollars later. That's fine. I give you thousand dollars now. That's fine. أو عينن, something specific. I'll give you a car. Can that be a dowry? Mahar? Of course. Dainan, even Dainan, add to that. Wallahi, so and so owes me thousand dollars. And he's supposed to pay me in three months. So when he pays me, that money is yours. Fine. Has value, monetarily value. Who gives me example on manfa'a al-mubah? The guy or the sahabi that the Prophet told him, your mahar is to teach her what you know from the Quran. So her mahar wasn't the ayat. Yeah, if someone comes today, and he goes to marry a woman, Wallahi, I read in the hadith, he said, give her the Quran. Here, there's your mahar. Or he, he prints a, call, a page from the internet and said, here's Quran, learn. La. Her mahar was the effort. He's putting to teach him. Because that has value too. Is it okay to get, to get money for teaching the Quran? It's okay. So the fact that he's going to spend some time with her to teach her the Quran, that if he would have spent it with someone else, he would have gone and paid. So her mahar was the value of that time spent. Okay? Like for example, 
I'm a doctor. My hour is 50 bucks. <laughs> so if I spend an hour with someone, he pays me 50 bucks. If that same hour I spend it with someone else to teach him how to paint a wall, that same hour I can be making 50 bucks. So that hour I spend with him has value, right or wrong? So this Sahabi, when he taught this woman that he married, whatever he knew from the Quran, that time he spent to teach her, that was her dowry, the value of that time. So let's say in, in that time, if you teach someone a page from the Quran or a surah from the Quran or an, an ayah from the Quran or a hizb or juz, you get paid 100 dirham. So if he spent that amount of time with her to teach her that amount of Quran, that means her dowry how much? 100 dirham. Not the juz, not the mushaf, not the surah that he knew. Clear? That is manfa'a mubah. Manfa'a mubah. Or he can say, your sadaq is, he has a, a house and he's renting it. Your sadaq is the rent that comes from this house for the next six months. Is that okay? Vacant? Allah, yani she will end up paying taxes on that. Die. <laughs> <laughs> أو يجعل صداقة تعليم علم كالفقه والحديث واللغة والنحو يعني الحمد لله for you been coming to these lectures and if you're learning anything يعني you have your dowry إن شاء الله not to worry about working anymore <تصفيق> طيب is this المنفعة المباح does it have to be only منفعة أخروية or it can be منفعة دنيوية خلاص مباح can be something beneficial in the آخرة or beneficial in the دنيا as long as it's permissible <coughs> فيقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اذهب فقل ملكتها بما معك من القرآن go and tell her or ملكتها بما معك من القرآن go tell her that now you're her husband for what you have from the Quran and you're going to teach her that. Okay. Who gives me the lead that the mahr can be manfa'a mubah dunyawiyya? Is this Quran ukhrawiyya or dunyawiyya? Dunyawiyya wa ukhrawiyya. Dunya and akhira. Quran teaches you how to live your dunya. Quran gives you peace of mind in the dunya. Tumanina, the dunya wa akhir. Faddinu kulluhu, the dunya wa akhir. Min al dunya. Which story in the Quran that there was a discussion of Mahar? What does mean? Bint al-Rasul? Shu'ayl. Wal-Rajih. That Shu'ayb is not Shu'ayb al-Nabi. Shu'ayb is a rajul salih. But he wasn't Shu'ayb the Prophet. There's a big gap. Okay. And if you look at the story of Shu'ayb, Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it with Nuh, huh? Hud, usually Nuh, Hud, Tamud, then you get Salih, then you get Shu'ayb. Before that, you get Ibrahim, huh? his kids, Ismail and Isha, Yaqub, and then you get or before yeah, it's, it's Ibrahim, then Shu'ayb. Then comes the story of Musa. There's a big gap. All right. But anyway. قَالَ إِنِّي أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُنْكِحَكَ إِحْدَ بْنَتَيْ هَاتَيْنِ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تَأْجُرَنِي مَانِي حِجَجْ فَإِنْ أَتْمَمْتَ عَشْرًا فَمِنْ عِنْدِكَ Ah, but anyway, I go there. 
وما أريد أن أشق والله يعني ما شاء الله He said I want to marry you one of my daughters two daughters as you know ها جاءت إحداهن تمشي على السطح He said but her mother will be you work for me eight for eight years And if you want to complete 10, it's your choice. But did he do 8 or 10? كما قال ابن عباس. So that was منفعة مباح دنيوي. He worked for him for 10 years. Okay? So that is a دليل that this مهر. يقول مؤلف فإذا زوج الرجل ابنته بأي صداق كان طيب الصداق الولي الولي let's say the father that's أولى الأولياء يعني في العقود للمرأة he says this is the mother you want to marry my daughter? That's fine. This is her mother. So the mother, the wali, can give the mother or ask for a mother less than the mother of the girls in her age, in her area, what usually the customs give to the girl or the girls. Okay? And that's why he said, فإذا زوج الرجل ابنته بأي صداق كان جاز. ها. Ah. So here زوج الرجل ابنته يعني الرجل marries his daughter to a man. Whatever this ولي choose to be الصداق it's okay. يصح. Even if it's this مهر or الصداق that الولي chose is less than the custom. Maybe this specific wali, this specific father, fears Allah and knows Allah and knows the sunnah and he doesn't want to make it difficult for this man whom he knows to be a good man, righteous man, fears Allah. But her, do, her, her, uh, her nieces, not nieces, her cousins and her relatives and her friends and her this and her that, their mahar was $10,000. Her father knows this guy cannot afford $10,000. Not only that, even if he knows he can afford, he doesn't want to make it hard on him because he really wants him to marry his daughter because he's a good guy. So he says, I marry you, my, you, I marry you my daughter for $5,000. Yes, sir. No problem with that. He's the wali and he has that right. That is a situation. <clears throat> Why? Because obviously, the mahar of the doors of the Prophet ﷺ, 500 dirham, was way less than the mahar of the women in Mecca. Way less. It was okay, because he was the father. What if the wali is not the father? If the wali is not the father, and he decrees the mahar, lower than the customs, such lowering is not valid. He doesn't have that right. Ayyim? Ya'ni. Ya'qul. وَلَا يُنْقِصُهَا غَيْرُ الْأَبِ مِنْ مَهْرٍ مِنْ مَهْرِ مِثْلِهَا إِلَّا بِرِضَاهِ However, if the wali is other than the father, then he cannot lower the mahr than the women who usually, what the women in her region or in her area usually get. He cannot lower it, go below, without her permission. What's the delete? Why the father was able to do it, but any other wali who can perform, who can be her wali and represent her in the marriage cannot. What takes that right away from everyone other than the father? Hadith. Anta wa abuka, anta wa maluka li abik. You, the hadith of the Prophet, you and your wealth belong to your father. 
We said your father can come and take your money, take from you, and you cannot ask him why. But you can stop him in one situation. Who remembers? Gambling. <laughs> he's gonna use it in halal. But in one situation, you cannot, he cannot, you, you can, you have the right not to give. We spoke about that. Okay. <clears throat> so, anta wa ma'aluka li abik. You and your wealth belong to your father. So, since me or I and my wealth belong to my father, then he has the right to do whatever he wants with it, with that exception. Clear? That's why the father had the right to drop the mahr, but no one else has, without her approval. But he dropped the mahr without her approval. Can we go to her and say, he dropped your mahr, your wali, other than her father? Below that custom. Are you okay with that? If she says okay, then we'll let it go. Because the uqud, tashil, make it easy. All right. ولا ينقصها الأب غير ولا ينقصها غير الأب من مهر مثلها. طيب. When he said من مهر مثلها مثلها, is it من from the father's side the women like her with their dowries? From the mother's side or the father's side? Even that the ulama have spoken. Women like her. From her father's side or her mother's side? Huh? Is it her friends? Is it this and that? Yeah, and the ulama have spoken about these, these things. And some of them said from her father's side because they all carry the same name. So that is more to be like her, same status, same family or whatever. But some said it's really the, uh, uh, yani the general woman in that area. <clears throat> huh? didn't mention what case. Oh, I didn't mention? And I will come I have to tell you. If he gonna take the money and give it to him. Church. <laughs> the brothers. If he gonna give, take the money and give it to the other kids, because that what will create shahna disputation. All right. Time. <clears> Time. <throat> if someone who's the wali, let's say the father is, is away, and he said to the grandfather or to the brother, "You're the wali." And the wali goes, want to be generous, huh? want to be great huh? on someone else's account. And you said, we know that the mahr of her relatives was $10,000, so we're going to only ask for $5,000. Yeah, salam alaik. Can happen? Can. Tayyib, now, if they don't agree, Yani, okay, we'll do the contract, huh? and then they realize it was less. Who pays the difference? Who gonna pay the difference? <laughs> they have. If they want to continue, they pay the difference. If they don't want to pay the difference, she says no. And I want to get like my cousin. Well, she's not better than me. That happens between women, mahidiyum, right? So. She says, no, either you, the, it becomes 10. What you want people to say about it? I got only five grand? Huh? So either you complete the 10, or I don't want to marry this guy. She got that right. So who is responsible to put the other five? قولان عند أهل العلم وهما روايتان عند الحنابي. قول الأول الزوج والقول الثاني huh? يرجع الموكل على وكيله بالنقص. طيب. 
The first, they said the husband. The husband, when he uh, agreed to marry her on 5,000, he didn't agree on 10,000. That's an opinion. They said he's the one who's benefiting from this whole thing. He's going to have a wife. The second opinion said, La. The one who put himself in this situation and gave up something that he did not have the right to do, he's responsible. So I know your responsibility. Before you say, yeah, I'll be the one. <laughs> All right? can be very costly. All right. Well, I'm يقول وإن أصدقها عبدا بس يعني تفنش الباب وإذا أصدقها عبدا بعينه فوجدته معيبا خيرت بين أرشه ورده وأخذ قيمة if the mahr that now doesn't happen if the mahr she said I want a slave man why so he can serve me do my things whatever I need him to do or or a woman slave woman then when they brought him yeah, and she wants, she's, for example, she loves to decorate her house and fix out sign and insign. So he brings her a slave man that she's depending on to fix, to do all that work for her, hard work. And he bring her, bring her a crippled slave man. <laughs> a man. A slave man with one arm. Slave man who can hardly see. That's Ma'ib. And he, he has defect, will not serve her purpose. And there is, yani the slave man is expected, he's here to serve. So if he's crippled or he's sick all the time or he's this or he that, he can't see, he can't hear well, he can't serve his purpose. So if she finds that he has defects, then she got two options. When I agreed you're going to bring me a car, I expect it to be a car that runs, work, don't bring me from the, the junkyard. <laughs> car without seats and without tires and all right yeah it's custom whatever is is expected huh <laughs> i will be five gears yeah. so he gets the best slave he's in, he has defects she got two options huh? either to say no i'm not taking him get me something else or he said okay Usually, when we say slave man here, usually worth 100,000 dinar. Like this sells for 70,000, so you owe me 30,000. So she's entitled for the difference. Okay? وَإِنْ وَجَدَتْهُ مَغْصُوبًا أَوْ حُرًّا فَلَهَا قِيمَةٌ If he comes, and here's your dowry, slave man. Ah, كيف حالك اليوم? She asked him. Like, I don't know why I'm here. What do you mean? My husband bought you. La, la, la. Your husband kidnapped me from uh, next town. <laughs> so, I'm not Or, he, I, I'm like, my master is in next town and he, he kidnapped me in the night. I was sleeping and he came, he told me, let's go. And, or, ah, how are you? Oh, who's your previous master? What do you mean? Previous, the one who owned you before. What you're talking about? Your husband came to my country and he, he kidnapped me or he sent me some, some gangsters and he, they kidnapped me or whatever the situation. I'm a free man. So if she finds out for him to be kidnapped, slave and kidnapped or stolen, or a free man and her husband brought him as a slave, she is entitled for the value. This man has to go back to his old master. This guy has, is a free. It's haram to enslave a free person. So she's entitled for it. وَإِنْ كَانَتْ عَالِمَ بِحُرِّيَّتِهِ أَوْ غَصْبِهِ حِينَ الْعَقْدِ فَلَهَا مَهْرُ مِثْلِهِ Or, he's saying, if, uh, if she knew that at the time of the contract that this slave is stolen or his free man, even if she knew, he has to go back to where he came from, and she's entitled for the mahr of similar women to her. 
وإن تزوجها على أن يشتري لها عبدا بعينه فلم يبيعه سيده أو طلب به أكثر من قيمته فلا قيمة And if you promise her, I'm gonna get you. Do you know the, the slave guy uh, that my uncle has? Yeah, he's very strong and very hard working. Because some slave people are, slave men are lazy. Uh, yeah, and they, they drive their masters crazy until they let them go free. Just free me from you. Huh? So they see dedicated, hard work in this and that. Allah, what you think? That will be your mahar. Okay, thank you. So when it's time for him to get the mahar, the, the uncle, I don't want to sell it to you. <laughs> He's doing a great job. So then he goes back to him. So he didn't want to sell it. Or he said, the value of a slave man is 100,000 dinar. Allah, this guy is good, 200,000 dinar. La, I can't afford that. So then she has the right for the value. And apply that to everything else. Yeah, and he, he comes and he tells her, you know, your mahar, will be, uh, and some people are يعني, fooled by these things, your mahar will be, uh, and he brings Google Earth, he opens in the computer Google Earth, and he shows her a house, uh, ocean view. This is your mahar. They go to buy the house, no, we're not selling you that. It's not for sale. It's not this, it's not that. But I want to buy him. Buy him, how much you want? 11 million. What? <laughs> I thought it's like 500,000 or something. Anyway, the situation. So when they say slave, apply that to everything else. Same thing, okay? Yeah. Right. Who takes the mahar? The husband, the father, the wali? Or her. The wali has the right to take it. But shouldn't. That is for her. Huh? That is for the woman. And anyone, any man who knows the sunnah and wants to be on the footsteps of the Prophet doesn't do that. This is a money given to her to get herself ready to buy whatever he needs, she needs, what this, this, that. So why you take it and some people take all of it? That's why they bargain. Because they're going to end up putting it in their pocket. And that is, should not, should not be done. And some al-hanabi, al-ulama al they said, if the wali, and the father, makes it so difficult and so expensive, the mahr, and the woman is not getting a husband, then she has the right to move to the next wali to get her married, and we talked about that. <coughs> What if you marry today and you tell her, I give you $10,000 in 20 years? In 20 years. Can she, is that valid agreement? Yes. 20 years, in 10 years, forget about 20 years, 10 years, I'll give you the money. Or your mahar will be after I sell this apartment. Or let, let's just keep it with the money. The amount, because that is the point of the question. When 10 years come, is he obligated to give her the mahr, the amount they agreed on 10 years ago, or the value of the amount they agreed on 10 years ago? Because $10,000 10, 10, 10 years ago can buy you a house, for example. $10,000 today, Ten years later, don't buy you a door, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm just exaggerating a little bit. Uh, I really don't have much mind to think. <laughs> I'm like shutting down right now. So, so is it what he gives her? The value, the amount, or the value? All right. The ulama have different, and this applies also when you borrow. You lend someone $10,000, and he comes 20 years later when I give you the 10000 And we have talking about that. So you can refer to the tapes or the reports. No more tapes. <laughs> Still have tapes? No. You guys don't import tapes? Don't import tapes. Huh? Okay. So the ulama have two, two opinions. 
الكساد مع بقاء التعامل فيه So the first opinion said as long as the currency now we're talking about money the currency they agreed on 10 years ago is still being used if it's still the same currency being used 10 years later then she is entitled for that amount 10,000 10,000 okay so obviously the second opinion will have to say when there is, the imla is cancelled. Okay? Cancelled or change or whatever the word they use. And you'll get Sultan Ta'amul Biha is Aslan. Fahina even Yathbu Tuluha Makana fi Awali Waktin al Rahu Sultan. They said, if 10 years later, the currency he promised her 10 years ago is not used anymore, cancelled by the government. Then they said, then she is entitled for the value of this amount at the time of the cancellation. So let's say, he promised her in 1990, he married her, and he told her in 2000, I'll give you $10,000. So 2000 came, but in 95, they canceled the dollars. So they said, then we're going to look in 95, how much $10,000 were worth? And that's what she's entitled for. And there is a calculator, right? Or some method, an equation, right? That can tell you $10,000 today, how much worth five years ago, right? Yeah, you told me. <laughs> right? Are you sure I told you? <laughs> yes, right? I, I never work with you didn't say calculators, but you said there is an equation or method to... to Don't go put me in trouble, huh? No, I need. And I, mean, I mean, inshallah, send it to you. You know? Your narration is strong. What I, what I mentioned was about the goal. How much gold they have against their money? Nothing. No more? Depending. They don't have more gold. How much debt do you uh, have? I, I think it's silver. That's why the gold is still going up. No. Then every country can print whatever they want. That's why wherever their country, their, their dollar or their currency going down, that means they got no gold. Depending. They're just printing. Look what happened to the Iraqi dinar. Huh? Before the, the invasion, the, the dinar, the one Iraqi dinar was how many dollars? Four, la, la, la. Five, four or five dollars, American dollars, the one dinar. Now I don't know how many thousand dinar the Iraqi equals one dollar. What happened is uh, Saddam Hussein canceled the dinar, the, the asli, the original, that used to be. And they used to print, his, uh, his kids and his people they used to print. And they'll go to the, to the gold market and buy all the gold with pictures, this money is called pictures, not even even real. So understand. <laughs>